Hey, Dobby the Fishing Elf here, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the gear links on this 2006 Peugeot 206 SW, which is making its debut on the channel. To get to the linkage, we need to remove a few other parts first, starting with the airbox here. You can either use a screwdriver like I am here, or a 7mm spanner or socket. Once you have the clip loose, there's also a few pipes you need to disconnect. As you see me do here, there's three different ones I removed just to make it easier and give me plenty of access. All you have to do to remove these is push in the yellow tab and give them a gentle tug. As you see, they come off quite easily. After that, there's a 10mm bolt to remove. Once we have the 10mm bolt out, all we have to do is pull out the air filter box just at the front here, as you see me do here, it just pops out really easily, just pull out the pipe and then pull up the box, it's not held in by anything. Once that's out of the way, it's time to remove the upper box, this simply pulls out now, it's all been loosened off. Don't forget the little black ring that stays on the intake, as you see me here grabbing it off now. Now it's time to turn our attention to the battery and battery tray. Start by removing the cover around the battery and then take off the positive battery terminal. This one just pops off, it's got like a spring clip on it. It's time to remove the negative terminal. This one is bolted on with a 10mm bolt. As you see me do here, I'll just undo it and then take it off to one side. Now it's time to remove the battery. I was quite surprised to see that it wasn't secured down. Usually it's held down by a 7mm bar as you can see here, there's a big long bar that I'm looking at the bottom right now. Yeah, so this one just lifts straight, straight out. Yours should be bolted down and secure. I have re-secured this one properly now. We just lift out this black plastic that's been between the battery and the battery tray. Now time to remove the battery tray. It's held down by one 10mm bolt. 130mm bolt and a 13mm nut. Let's start by removing the 10mm bolt. As you can see it comes up very easily. Just undo it and remove it. Now let's move on to the two 13mm, starting with the 13mm bolt, again similar just undo it and remove it, the same with the 13mm nut, once you have all these undone, There should be two more bolts holding this in as well, but they are missing. I'm just pointing out where they are now, as you can see. We can start removing the worn out gear linkage now that we have all the other parts removed. As you can see, it's probably not really worn out. So to get this first part off, it's reached in with a pair of water pump pliers and pulled off the little knob that was left on the um, gearbox. Just removing the upper part of the gear linkage. I tried a screwdriver to help me out. But 
because it wasn't working. So in the end, I just reached on my hand and gently twisted off this bit of the gear linkage, as you see here. Once that's off, it's time to move down to the lower parts. Now it's time to start getting the next two pieces off. These are quite tricky because they're quite low down. I'm using a screwdriver here to, on the top one. Just gently press it in and wiggle it around. As you can see, it's quite worn out. It starts to tear and rip apart. Eventually on this top one, the other side falls off first, and then just a matter of prying it off with my hand. It's quite a struggle, and it does leave the centre part of the um, gear link you keep behind. I'll we'll move that with a pair of pliers in a moment. Here's a bare angle of the linky bits that remain. You can see there's a central bit out of the top gear linkage, and underneath it is the worn out bottom part of the gear linkage. I tried to continue with the screwdriver, but it wasn't working, so I switched to a pair of pliers to pop them off. Get the pliers around it and then pop it comes off. Now it's time to move down to the bottom one. It's just slightly more tricky. Once you get the pliers on there, you just gently pop it off. As you see, it come apart in two different parts. So the first part pops off, and then I take off the centre section. Now all we have to do is remove the last part. This just pops off very easily, as you see me do here. Here's a look at the old linkage. As you can see, it's well and truly worn out. And here are the new parts. As you can see, they look a lot better. I'm just going to lay them down side by side so you can see them next to the old parts. This is always good to do to make sure the new parts will fit properly. If you're interested, there's a link in the description of where I got these parts from. Now it's time to get the linkage back in. The easiest way to do this I found is by hand. In hindsight, I should have done the lowest part first, but unfortunately I wasn't really thinking here. So I did this part first. As you can see, with a bit of gentle wiggling and squeezing, it just pops on. Now time to get the lower part on. 
This would have been so much easier without the other part in the way. As you can see, I struggle a bit to get it started. Once I change angles a bit, it goes on easily. Now it's time to attach the other side of the linkage. This part just screws on just like the other parts. It's just a matter of lining it up and then squeezing it until you hear it pop on. It's quite a tactile click you feel when it goes on. You can't really mistake it. Now it's time to put the upper piece on. This is the same as the bottom piece. I did struggle a bit here because it kept wiggling around. I was going to use this pair of pliers, but I changed my mind and just went back to my hand. If you're enjoying this video, please drop me a like. Sub to the channel and leave me a comment. And as you can see, it's gone on. Let's get the last part of the linkage back on. So I started with the part closest to the battery tray. As you can see, I grabbed it with both hands and just pushed down until it popped on. Now let's move to the other side. I grabbed a pair of slip joint pliers here as they gave me the best access to this part. And with a gentle squeeze, see the grease pop out the top? That means it's attached. all the link is reinstalled. I hopped in the car and just tested out the gear stick, make sure all the gears were easy to find and were staying in place. Time to get the battery tray back in. So as you can see, I pop it back in and then I install the three bolts that hold it down. The eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed but the metal bar that holds the battery down is missing. That is because I removed it so I could install the battery properly. Usually I start with the two 13mm so the nut goes on and the bolt goes in and then I tighten them down. Next in goes the 10mm, not forgetting the little metal plate that goes underneath this one. And that gets tightened down with my Katsu quarter inch drive ratchet, which, spoiler alert, will be the start of the next watch in the toolbox.
Once that's down, it's time to reinstall the little bit of plastic that goes between the battery tray and the battery. Next in comes the battery, making sure it's facing the right way around. Then the battery hold down comes in. I just tighten down my hand at first and then I tighten down with a 7mm socket on my ratchet. Once that's tightened down, Time to get the battery cover back in. And then reattach the battery terminals. Starting with the negative, which is bolted down, so you just quickly grab a 10mm and then tighten it up. and then simply clip on the positive terminal I forgot to record me putting these black plastic bits back on so as you can see they're definitely on here and then I just drop the cover and that's the battery back in now on to reinstalling the air boxes first one to go back on connects to the intake just push it on to the intake to begin with And then line up the 10mm bolt and start that by hand. Now we connect the pipes. They simply just push back on, as you can see me doing here. Once they're all back on, it's time to tighten down the Jubilee clip on the top. I used a 7mm socket for this, but you can also use a screwdriver. Once that's tightened down, it's time to tighten up the 10mm bolt. And finally it's time to reinstall the last air box and simply just push it into place. It can be a bit of a pain but just line up the tabs and then just pop it in.
And that's the job done. Thanks for watching until the end. If you'd like to see more from me, please sub to the channel, drop me a like and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Once again, thank you for watching Dobby's Repairs. Have a great day.